I really do appreciate you um, helping with this charity. Um, I'm surprised actually, a lot of members of the metal community, like I've got Wolfgang from Germany and mm -hmm. Tim from Brave Words is giving us full skins on his website. Like people are actually really pitching in and, and helping out, which is important, I think, uh, when you go to Cuba and you see these kids starving, really starving and not having access to basic oh, yeah. medicines and foods, it's really appreciated that you uh, are giving us a little airtime. I, I oh, thank you. Thought, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about the Cuban metal invasion. How did you get involved? And what was your role in it besides filming? The Cuban metal invasion. Um, I went to Cuba in March of 2019. I did get a Facebook message from the nefarious Freddy who's featured in the in the documentary and he said hey man we're gonna go to Cuba with 11 metal bands and we're gonna travel across the country and we're gonna go and help some kids and I said okay let's do it I said I'm in let's go just without even thinking as soon as he said we're gonna go to some children's hospitals and help kids sure I said sure what do I need to do he goes bring some supplies for the children bring some supplies any medicine uh, you know musical instruments, anything you can leave behind and, and give them to these children. We're going to go and play some concerts for the children. We're going to go help them. And um, I was not intending to make a documentary. It, it, the documentary was purely by accident. It got made by accident. Um, I had just bought two new cameras and I thought, oh, I'll bring my new cameras with me. Right. And I just bought a new <laughs> camera backpack and I thought I'll bring my backpack and my cameras and I'll go out and I'll test it out with these bands. and have some fun. I had no intention of making a documentary whatsoever. So we get to Cuba, we go and have a great time, we have a big tour, you know, I shot a bit of footage, a couple of other guys in the other band shot a bit of footage, and we had a great experience, and I came home with this bunch of footage, I threw it on a hard drive and I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay. Um, you know, fast forward to the coronavirus hitting Cuba, and it hit Cuba particularly hard. The Cuba economy is, uh, I think, number two is tourism or close to number one. I think oil might be their number one um, source of income and then tourism second. So when the tourism stopped immediately, it just suddenly stopped with coronavirus, um, Cuba was in real trouble. There's uh, lineups for food. There's uh, rations. You know, they cycle electricity. Uh, there's black, rolling blackouts, uh, water. I mean, when we went there before the pandemic, there were cities we went to that had no running water as it was. You know, the further you get away from the tourist areas. So Cuba was in pretty rough, or is in pretty rough shape. Um, we got contacted by the bands there and said, help, you know, we're dying down here. We're in real trouble. Um, worse than it was in the, the special period when the Soviet Union fell apart mm -hmm. and stopped funding Cuba. So I thought, well, I can send these guys 500 bucks. I sent them some money, but, you know, how do I get this rolling? And why not make a documentary? I thought, hmm, well, I have a bit of footage. I'm sitting at home with the pandemic. I can't do anything. How do I get money to these kids in Cuba? So I started going through the footage and I thought I can make a documentary out of this. I, I used every scrap of footage that I had and I got some footage from the other guys in the other bands. Um, and we cobbled together the 38 minute documentary, Cuba Metal Invasion. All the proceeds from the sale of the, the documentary, there's a, a link if you go to facebook.com forward slash charity metal. I put up a Facebook page and you'll see a link there where you can go and watch the documentary uh, by donation. The minimum donation is 12 Canadian dollars. Um, you, you make a donation, you can watch the, the documentary and all the money goes to the children in Cuba, um, right. which was a real problem. It took more work and it was a huge hassle to try to get that money directly to them um, really? than it was to cut the documentary together. Um, so the documentary has kind of been soft released. I released it a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and um, you know CMM from Germany, uh, Wolfgang Roth's getting behind it. A lot of media partners are getting behind it. I really appreciate the brutally delicious podcast for helping us out here and giving us some airtime for this charity to help raise money for these children. Um, so yeah, if you can go to the Facebook page. There's a link there. Make a donation, you know, and twenty bucks to somebody, twelve bucks to somebody might not be a big deal. To but children down in Cuba, $12 is more than a month's salary for a lot of these people. So, you know, your donation will help. It will make a difference. Um, some people are asking me, you know, does all the money go to the children or does the Cuban government get involved? This is where we had a lot of problems. Um, and I kind of have to be a little bit careful because uh, we had to install some workarounds. But, you know, navigating through the government, the banking system, I don't want to get the bans in Cuba in trouble with the Cuban government. 
So to work that out was a huge headache, and I was almost gave up a few times, but um, we did find a solution, so the answer is yes. All the money that people donate from viewing this documentary does go to the correct place, and it goes and helps children, helps their families, um, and that's the, uh, you know, the short, short term, how, how it got going. That's how it happened. Did you know Freddie beforehand, like from the cruises or from somewhere along the way, or did he just like randomly reach out? <laughs> Freddie Contreras is uh, a real character, and he's he's sort of the main protagonist in the film. Freddie's a real character. Uh, if you're in the metal world and you go to festivals in Europe or in, in Mexico or wherever, you'll likely see Freddie. If you're in the metal community, you'll, you may know him. Freddie's in a band from, from Los Angeles called Prophecia. Uh, Prophecia is, is his metal band, but he's a, a real, I don't know what the word is, a fixture of the metal scene. He's kind mm -hmm. of a driving force in the metal scene. Freddie's at all the festivals, all the concerts. I don't know how he does it. And his band, Prophecia, uh, you know, are playing throughout Mexico, throughout the United States. Uh, so a lot of people know Freddie. Um, I've seen him on several 70,000 tons of metal cruises. I've seen him on those before. The last time I saw him was in uh, March 2020 in Mexico City at the Hell and Heaven Festival. I was at Hell in Heaven, and there's Freddie. Um, so Freddie's a very funny guy. He's this great, big, burly guy. He's a big guy, and he's got, you know, the whole metal look, and right. people are kind of terrified from him, you know, and, and Freddie's a bit of a wild man, frankly. I mean, you know, he's slamming shooters, and he's partying, and he's laughing. He's gregarious. He's really outgoing. Right. Um, but you see the film, you know, Freddie's actually a sweet, lovable yeah. guy, uh, and you know, if there's some, some things I want people to take away from the film, it's maybe how Freddie lives his his life. So I did know Freddie before the, the documentary, but, you know, in the metal community, if you are sort of a regular at festivals and things, you might you might have known him. Or, um, you know, I urge people to check out his band, Prophecia. Right. The one thing yeah. I find interesting about the metal community, and maybe not so much with other music scenes, is how they all are, they all come together. Like, I can easily see people getting on board with this and helping you out or helping the children out because the metal community is super even though it's big and global it's still pretty tight knit and i guess that's the word i'm looking for tight knit right yeah i agree with you i agree with you i think that shows the power of of, of not only metal music but but music in general you know uh, music is a universal language uh you know when we went to cuba to shoot this uh this documentary a lot of the people didn't speak english but music brought us all together and you know some of the you go to a concert on a, on a something like seventy thousand tons of metal there's people from 70 plus different countries on a, on a, at a festival some of those countries might even be at war with each other right um but we're all sharing the same experience we all have a common interest a common goal um and that's what i want people to take away from the film you know freddie lives his life um you know extremely but but he's very loving and very open and, and i want people to you know, right now in the pandemic, I think it pays to be kind. Everyone's struggling to get by, whether you know it or not. Probably everybody's struggling. Uh, you may be struggling yourself. I think it's okay to cut yourself some slack. Um, so I want people to take away that no matter what country you're from, no matter the color of your skin or what music you listen to, you know, we can all come together. We can all unite. Um, I think Cuba's kind of cut off from, from the United States. You know, they're yeah an offic official enemy in a way, in some ways. But... You know, we can. You go to Cuba and you see these people, and it's like, wow, they have human yearning just like anybody else. They hurt just like anyone else. They love. So that's, you know, Freddie's a very loving guy. He he breaks down social barriers, cultural barriers, and that's all done through music, metal music. Um, right. I think metal gets a bad rap. People who see a guy like Freddie, they're scared of him because he's sure. six foot six and he's covered, with, you know, his tattoos and whatever, and you know, they're scared of him. But he's actually, uh, you know. You break all that down. He's a he's a really caring, loving guy. He's a sweet guy. Um, you have to see the film, see what I mean. But uh, yeah. there's some moments in the film where you know a big tough guy like Freddie is just kind of reduced down to to tears in some cases. When we go to these these children's hospitals, you know it was uh, it was tough to see these little kids. So that's what I, I want people to take away: <laughs> love, be kind to each other. You know, yeah. and and music I think facilitates that. Music's a something we can all agree on 
had you come been together to, with. Oh yeah, I hundred percent agree. Have you been to Cuba before? Because I know we can't go, or maybe now we can sort of. Um, I have been to Cuba before. Um, Canada goes to Cuba. Like there's a lot of cheap vacations. You can fly right down to Cuba from Toronto. A lot of people go from Toronto or from right. Vancouver. I have been to Cuba before. Um, Americans aren't really allowed to go to Cuba. The Helms-Burton Act, they call it. You're not allowed to uh, spend money there. It's trading with the enemy. Um, having said that, there were a lot of Americans that did go. Um, they didn't fly directly from, from Los Angeles. They had to fly L.A. To, to Mexico City and then fly to Cuba. Right. And I've been to Cuba before be this trip with other Americans and you get to customs and the Cubans want Americans to come in you know just say please don't stop my yeah. passport and they'll go okay no problem and they won't uh, come on in we want Americans to come so yeah officially I don't know I'm not an American I don't know what kind of trouble right. you would get in for visiting Cuba but I do know that a lot of Americans do go to Cuba you are welcome there um, so Canadians go there a lot it's a it's yeah. a vacation spot yeah I hear that they're totally. sort of uh, opening the or loosening the restrictions, mm. it may be under the table, or you know, it's not a big known thing. But I've heard they were sort of loosening the restrictions. Uh, under uh, Obama, Obama opened things up a significant amount, and then Trump came in and he clamped down on things yeah. for Cuba. Uh, and now with Biden, I'm not. I haven't really been paying attention, frankly. Right. I think Biden may be opening things up again for Cuba, um, but I do know, like. The reason we made this documentary, if, if you go to facebook.com forward slash charity metal, you make a donation, they need it. It's really needed. People need money because they're starving. Um, part of that is the blockade. You know, they, they can't do business with the United States. And the United States um, punishes a lot of its trading partners if you do business with Cuba. Yeah. So that's why they're in such a, a dire strait. So I don't know what's going on with the restrictions now that Biden is the president. Yeah. I really tried to avoid politics in this. I've spent a lot of time in Florida. There's a huge community of Cubans in Florida, of course. Sure. And they want the Cuban government to be crushed. Uh, they think the Cuban government is oppressive to the people that live there, that the people that live there don't have any freedom. It's a communist country. They want to crush the Cuban government at all costs and sometimes at the expense of the people. Um, I just tried to avoid politics in the documentary. It's sure. what you said, Bruce, you know, music brings people together. And that's what I want people to take away from this film. Hey, we can help some children that really need it. They don't know that they're growing up in a communist country. You know, when you they're see some anything, right. some poor kid that's suffering, you want to help them. It doesn't matter where they're from. So, so lastly, how did you get your bands involved? Like, how did you find the 11 bands to you? Actually, I wasn't, um, I wasn't part of that. Um, there's a festival there called the Pinar Rock, the Pinar Rock Festival, um, that a group from Cuba called Tendencia put together. And they invite bands from all over the world. So once I got involved, things had been pretty much put in place. There was bands from Germany, uh, Australia, Mexico, the United States. Of course, there were some Cuban bands. Um, everything had been set into motion when I got involved. I just jumped on board to go and have fun. And, you know, I was shooting some footage. Sure. Enjoyed, enjoyed the experience. So all the bands had, had been put together. Um, right. Yeah, if, if you go to facebook.com forward slash charity metal, you'll see, you know, links to the bands. Um, there were two bands from Germany. Uh, uh, they were, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. All Will Know from, from Germany and Precipitation from Germany. There was Jeremy Harris came from all the way from Australia, which is a significant distance to yeah. do that tour. Uh, There's uh, Prophecia from Los Angeles in, in Mexico, uh, a band called Coltal from Los Angeles, who's sort of LA, Mexico. Uh, Era from Mexico City, a Mexican band. Um, and there's some great music in the documentary. You'll hear a lot of heavy metal music from the bands that um, were participating. So I didn't have anything to do with the bands. I just kind of joined on to a, a tour. Everyone paid their own expenses to get to Cuba. Once we got there, then the Cuban uh, government took care of everything else. We were given a tour bus. We were given uh, hotels. They fed us every day. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, it was just totally state-sponsored uh, festival. Nice. And you'll, you'll see in the film, uh, you know, we run out of basics, like there's no milk. There's no coffee. Uh, there's only very limited menu like fried chicken, fried plantain. Right. Every day, fried plantain, fried plantain. You know, they so the things were pretty rough when we went there, and they're significantly worse now. That's why we're we're trying to raise money for these these kids in the hospitals. Doctor. Yeah. So lastly, your parents, as am I. How did it impact you visiting these or seeing these children and going to these hospitals? I mean, that had to profoundly impact you, right? 
It did. Um, I'm a, I'm a parent for sure. Uh, I have little kids myself, and um, you know, I regret not filming more in the children's hospital. I did film a bit in the hospital. I regret not filming more, but it was uh, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I mean, to be frank, it was very emotionally, and even a big tough guy like Freddie was was crying. Right, a lot of people were crying. We go to visit these kids, and we we help them out. We brought medicine and toys and musical instruments. It was tough. Uh, a lot of people were crying. It's like watching these little kids suffer. It's not easy to do. It's tough. So, wow. Yeah, Freddie was crying. I was. I felt impacted. It, it you know, took a bit out of me. I imagine. Um, so when when we were contacted post pandemic, you know, oh help, we're in real trouble here. That's what motivated me to put the documentary together and try to get some money to these kids because they, you know, they were suffering before. Um, there's a sign, a huge mural on the side of the hospital that said. Um, a child deserves it all. A sick child deserves it even more. Um, that's in the film. So, yeah, it was really difficult. On the other hand, on a positive side, we went to this, excuse me, other um, place for, for kids. They had an artist outreach uh, for children. So they had this center where um, artists would come and teach, you know, art, uh, lithography, painting, music, dance. And they would help uh, children that were, you know, adversely affected or from vulnerable right. you know families and it was a really positive experience that actually energized us quite a bit and i saw you know how a little bit of money funding for the arts you know significantly improved the quality of of their lives and made them feel better about themselves um, they raise money by selling some of the art that they create there they create paintings and different things so that was a very that particular day was a very positive day and we felt energized like oh wow look at how much of a positive impact art and music has on these poor kids and it did and it made us feel better you know so one day we're at the kids hospital everybody's sick and dying the next day we go to the to the art outreach center and they're helping kids so uh that was a very positive thing yeah okay so lastly i know you've said it a couple times in here but if people want to find it go ahead and plug it one more time <laughs> facebook.com forward slash charity metal Awesome. You can go and watch the 38-minute documentary called Cuba Metal Invasion, 11 metal bands from five different countries travel to Cuba and we tour through there. All the money goes to the children. Please go and enjoy the documentary. Check it out. See what the metal scene's like. Uh, your donation will really make a difference to people's lives. Awesome. Thank you, Ken. This is Freddy. Freddy's on all accounts. Outwardly crazy. Reckless flouts the rules, parties. And so February 2019, I got a Facebook message from Freddy. He said, hey, we're gonna go to Cuba with a bunch of metal bands. Go to some hospitals and help some kids. Without hesitating, I said yes. I told my wife, honey, we're going to Cuba. We're gonna travel through the country with 11 metal bands. Germany, Mexico, Australia, United States. We wouldn't be anywhere near a resort. This is the real Cuba. How would metal be received by the people that lived there? Cuba had been invaded before. How would its denizens feel about an invading army of metal bands? Would we be welcomed, shunned? The Cuban metal invasion had already begun. We couldn't stop it, Freddy. What have we gotten ourselves into? 